We love hip hop. Even what we were talking about before, um, with content, yeah, and how things are changing now. Yes, like you're right. Like it is a, a great time with all this Drake stuff coming out. Mm. Even with you as a DJ, how does that affect you? Are you playing any of this stuff? Yeah, of course, of course, you have to, right? And you have to kind of show that you know you have to play both sides. You know, mm. like to, at least to me, I want to play both sides. I mean, I guess pending where I'm at, because sometimes <laughs> you play the wrong side and the wrong person's in the room, you can get checked. And that's happened to me and to like a few other DJs. But um, you know what? I think it's good because you have to educate the crowd and yeah, you have to yeah, kind of yeah. play, you know what? This is like the Kendrick, but you know what? Let's, you know, let's play Drake's, Drake's, you know, uh, Drake's new version. And then now he just dropped that uh, push, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. The Taylor made freestyle. But yeah, wait Taylor a minute. Made. When like that came out, because... Salute to DJ Czar, right? Uh, yeah. One of my co-hosts. Mm-hmm. And we call him DJ Pick and Choose because <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm not playing that Kendrick song anywhere when I, in Toronto. You know, I'm yeah. staying loyal to OVO. Da, da, da. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Can a DJ, you, you just say you played like that, so you're cool with it. But yeah, like, I'm cool with it. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, and I'm a big Drake fan too. Like, mm-hmm. don't get it twisted. I love Drake. I love OVO. You know, shot the whole camp. But yeah. end of the day, I think, you know what? I'm not I'm not paid by the camp. I'm not, I'm not with the camp, and you know, shout out to them. And you know, like I got love for them, but at the same time, too, the song is a banger. And yeah. I'm sure you know, you guys will admit whether they want to or not. Like that, like the like that is a slapper. Like the beats fire, and Kendrick's verse. You know, it was it, it was cool. It was cool, and it's and it's noteworthy. So it's something to me as like a DJ that I should play for the crowd. You know, and it's something that end of the day people want. If people don't want to hear it, then obviously I'm not going to play it. But it's if it's a song that people are you know they 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 like want and end of the day when you're DJing at a club you know you like you have to play for the people who are spending money at the bar this aka is you know whoever's gonna buy like the the most bottles and mm-hmm. if they want to hear that song you got to play it yeah so it just kind of you know comes back to that but at the same time I'm 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 like gonna play Drake's Drake's uh, you know. Drake's version and you know you gotta play a medley of Drake right after you oh, play like that trust me I'm doing that I'm doing that I have that all on deck you know? <laughs> no friends in the industry you back to back back to back, <laughs> to back everything you know uh, started from the bottom whatever you know yeah <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah so. so okay just one more nerd out question when it's gonna come to that right sure. Because I, I'm not a DJ. I yeah. I play one on, on podcast. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But like when you're playing this song, right? Mm-hmm. The future verse obviously is cool, right? Yeah. Are you cutting it like right to the Kendrick part? Yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing. I'll play maybe like the first four or five, like the maybe like first four to eight bars of the, of the uh, future part and yeah, then yeah. go straight to Kendrick. Cause cut straight to like Kendrick have like a, Q point setup in thing uh, Serato and go straight to Kendrick's <laughs> part, you know. Because end of the day, people have short, uh, uh, you know, like people don't like to listen to a full song as it is in general. Facts, and especially when you're at a club, you want to hear the, just like the best parts of the song, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, unless it's like a super massive hit, you know. And for that song, you have to play Kendrick's verse, and then you're out. <laughs> mix it out to the mix next it out one. to the next one, <laughs> quick, quick. You know? And people are in there. Oh, oh exactly. <laughs> oh, that happens all the time. I have like ADD when I uh, DJ as it is. So, so many times people are like, man, like you, you mix too fast. You're, you're not playing it too fast. I'm like, sorry. You know, I just have like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You're that's juggling, how, yeah. bro. I'm juggling, you know, I'm just going in, you know, so that's it. Oh, man. Well, listen, man, let's, let's start this up because like for the audio listeners, they don't see who's on the screen, but you know, I want to just like talk shop today. Like as a, as a man who's over the years in this hip hop game as a rapper, I've always found myself hanging out with DJs. Mm. So I understand the DJs struggle, the successes and different things like that. So I, and just, just y'all all all around demeanor. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know what I'm talking about, hundred percent, hundred percent. I know exactly what you're saying. Because the DJ, like a lot of people... We're like weirdos in a sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit, you know, like a lot of us move weird sometimes. No, not, not weirdos, because weirdos is like relative like to what people think is weird or yeah, not. Yeah, correct. But like, there's some DJs who are like very outgoing, like uh, a Kid Capri or something like mm, that. But DJs correct. have always been the cool person in the room, the chill person, the person you could actually confide in a more times. <laughs> you know a lot what I'm of saying? times, yeah. Where, where the rapper is the more arrogant, out, uh, outside, uh, 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 yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You have to be like the, like yeah. the person, like the, the like uh, 
standout person in the room is like the rapper or singer or whoever. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to have this conversation with a gentleman that I've known for a multitude of years. He, I, so, I feel like we've been, I've known you before doing a podcast. I, I Yeah, you know, because I remember you from the Empire days. I remember okay. from the Empire days and actually from like Real Toronto DVD, obviously, as you know, many people know, that's when I kind of first heard of you and then after actually I bought that DVD, I actually started to listen to Empire and stuff because mm. I think that's around the time there was um Project Bounce. Yeah. And that's when I kind of got on got like uh you know like I actually heard about you, but then I kind of like would see you outside, you know, back in those days, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. so it's like, you know, dope to see even your evolution as a person, right? So, so. Oh, salute, salute. So yeah, man, we, we know with no further ado, we have the DJ who you might see if you're over there in, in B-Town for the Raptors 905 game, or you might see him at the at the ACC for the for the, for the the Raptors-Raptors game. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I've seen yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It was, like, it was like a special guest appearance. Yes. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Shout out to Raptors for that. So with no further ado, we have DJ Andre 905 in the motherfucking building. My up, thank you for having me. No, thanks for coming through, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Like I said, I, I want to just be able to chop it up with you and find out a few things about like the whole DJing game and stuff like that. Can you break down to the people, like even like what you do currently with like with the Raptors 905? Yeah. So and, and even what that is as, as well. Yeah. So the Raptors 905, they are the farm team for the actual Raptors, mm-hmm. which means basically they're the uh, minor league where they have um, lots of players that say, for example, can't play in the NBA because there's only 10 spots on, on, on a team, 10 yeah. total spots. So they actually get to play in the uh, in this league called the G League. And so they can actually work on their skills, um, develop themselves. So then that way, if they get called up to the NBA, they're all set and they're not kind of rusty <coughs> because they haven't had any game action. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I'm the I'm the team DJ for the for the uh, Raptors 905. And then um, I've also done some stuff with the actual Raptors as well. OK, um, so so it's been dope and it's been like a blessing to DJ for the team. So pretty much like. During the games, that kind of like entails me playing songs during uh, timeouts, but also I yeah, I get to play um, warm up for when the players come out, even like um, before like the fans show up, and then I'll play for like the fans, you know, uh, for like an hour mm-hmm. um, before the actual game starts, and then during the game, I'm just kind of playing in between any breaks and such, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like uh, halftime and such. As a as a Toronto centric net network, right? We're over yep. here, um, and you know we have a big local scene. Correct. Are you able to slide in a couple of, of local songs? Of, of course, yeah. I've been doing it all the time since since I've been their team DJ since 2015. I've been playing guys from the city, guys and girls from the city and the country. You know what? If the uh, music's dope, hundred percent. Like you know what? Like I don't care. I don't take sides. I'm not involved in any politics. No nonsense. Like to mm-hmm. me. If I rock with you as an artist, I rock with you as an artist. I don't care what area you're from, what your gender is, what your background is. I don't really care. If it's good, it's good. I'm yeah, going to play yeah. it. But at the, at the same time, too, I also look at it as like, do you have motion behind your name, too, mm-hmm. right? Say, for example, because sometimes there are some songs that I may not personally like, but I know, okay, the, like the crowd will like or people will know. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to play your song at the game because... It has legs behind it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it makes sense for me to play the song. Yeah, yeah. Even with the song selection, right? Mm-hmm. Um, are you getting to pick the song that you play, or is it like based on like a, a, a playlist that's pre-selected, or are you going on like what's popping, basically? Only? Yeah. So I kind of I'm able to play what I want during warm up, um, before the game, halftime, mm-hmm. after the game, during the game for the actual timeouts that's kind of pre-planned by the actual raptors 905 okay. game operations team so they'll kind of pick you know like the songs to play for like the dancers or to play for say they have like a um hit with say for example td bank mm-hmm. they have like a song that's going to be just for that hit so it's kind of so it's actually like a full out like tv um production kind of show in, yeah. in, 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 in the sense that you know because say for example coca-cola has like this uh sponsor so, so they're gonna do like a coca-cola segment and they'll have a song kind of themed to that segment Mm -hmm. so like for example like they picked basically what they want 
the the segment to look like yes. they've already put the sound design together like as far as like they want this song or this beat to be playing correct right correct, correct. so they you know they need to make sure that you stay you stick to the script that yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah because i have an actual script i have an actual script yeah, so I, yeah. I have an actual script that i have to follow and say okay for example first quarter timeout i have to play this song you know for for, for this period and then after that, switch to something else. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, it's like you have to kind of stick to like a script for for certain points of the game. But like outside of that, like halftime and so and like sometimes if there are injury timeouts, I can kind of I have like the the leeway to play what I want as long as it's family friendly and clean edited. Yes, that's why I tell artists send me clean edits of your songs. <laughs> I can't play for like you know for like some you know kids. You know, uh, you know, swear words and things of the, of of that nature, right? Yeah. So we have what to keep it family friendly. What about the drill? Yeah. So you no, know, I so I still play drill and stuff, but I just tell them just edit it, and sometimes I'll have to re-edit the songs because sometimes some of these engineers, I have you know love for all of y'all, but some of y'all you leaving words like shit and you know <laughs> shit's not so bad, you know, shit's not so good, <laughs> like bitch and ho and battery thing is like I have to like like certain songs I have to really <laughs> listen to. And re-edit because there's been times where uh, I played a song and I thought it was clean because someone sent it to me and I didn't listen and I didn't do my due diligence to listen in advance and I yeah. played it and all you hear is an N-word or a B-word and you're just like, oh man, you're cringing and I'm praying no one, no, no one's And that's attention. the hook. It's going to come back again. It's going to come back again. You got to make it sound quick, you know? So, you know, 100%. You oh, know, man. How was it um, doing the... Um the Raptors, the game. So that was, uh, so that was for South Asian night. So for the Raptors, what they did is they wanted to book like a bunch of South Asian talent for that night. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So they asked me to be the the guest DJ for like the first half of the game, also like the first hour of the of the doors opening. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like I, I was I was able to to like play um, for like the first maybe for, uh, I guess forty five minutes to like an hour and. It was just they were just like you know what play what you want but try to throw in some South Asian songs because it is South Asian heritage night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah, like, yeah. yeah, okay, cool, like no problem. I'm gonna throw in some AP Dylan and uh, Sidhu Muswala and you know artists of that nature. Yeah, man. Because I even see with you, bro. Like one thing I notice even in my emails, I get emails from you, DJ Andre 905. Yes, sir. You know, it's it's a well written email. Are artists sending you stuff to send out, or are you working with artists as well? Like, on yeah, a so both, both. So a lot of times, camps will uh, hit me up, and they'll be like, "Hey, you know what? I need this out." Um, and like, I work with all artists from all from, and, and like, if you've got my emails, you've seen from every from pretty much every area of the city. Mm -hmm. I've had like I've done work with tons of artists. Um, yeah, and I and like what I'll do is I'll just send out their records to other DJs, people in the, you know, in the game like yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I'll send out like a full DJ pack with like the clean version, dirty version, and like a small write-up on the record and if and the links to like their social media and such just to kind of get their records out to other DJs, right? Because I think that's uh, important because so many times we have so many great artists in the city, but their songs stay on SoundCloud or YouTube or Apple Music and it's not getting to the DJ. And I feel like I like I can kind of help in that way that I can get your music to the uh, to to the other DJs, you know, whether they play it, it's on them, yeah. and, and and you know, but at least I can try to. At least my goal is mm -hmm. I can at least get the records to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so many times, and like you'd be surprised how many big DJs, not even from Canada, but from outside Canada in the states, that even hit me up till this day, be like, oh, can you send me this new record from uh, Presser or this new record from Doobie or yeah. you know, this new Pyrex record? So it's so it's so, you know, so it's like dope that way. I would imagine you're probably like the link to a lot of American and international DJs yeah, when it yeah. comes to like tapping into Canadian music. Yeah. Right? You know what? You'd be surprised because even sometimes they'll come down and, they, and they'll hit up other DJ friends of mine and then they'll just kind of forward my information to them and be like, mm -hmm. Hey, I heard you, I heard like, you know, like you're, you're uh, tapped in with like the like local scene. Who should I play? Who should I not play? What works? What doesn't work? And, you yeah. know, and I'll always tell them, I'll be like, Hey, you can, I'll be like, these are like the songs that I don't work. And I'm like, but I, I tell them like, just, Definitely be careful because in Toronto, we do not play. And unfortunately, sometimes you can play certain songs that can upset people. And if those people are in the crowd, <laughs> you know, you can get attacked. Yeah. And that, and that, that has happened. <laughs> to other DJs you know, what? I, I, I want to touch on that. Definitely. Yeah. I want to go through a history. But there was one thing I forgot to do before I even started. I forgot to salute my sponsors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let me do that quick, fast. Uh, you know, because we got to make sure that we always... Keep the keep the sponsors well well uh well saluted, you know what I'm saying? 
Big Stuta Diamond Club. Okay, that's the sign that you see right behind me over here. Um, if you need some of that piffity piff or edibles, pens, any type of 420 needs, hit them up on their Instagram page, Diamond Club underscore Canada, or you can find them on the Seven Days of Weed website. Use the code We Love Hip Hop and you'll receive a discount on anything on the menu. You know what I mean? Also, if you need to get some of that grabba, there's some grabba packs up there on the wall courtesy of steaming hot grabber and they got all different types of grabber flavors okay red rose grabber red herring grabber all that good stuff all right hit them up on their instagram page steaming hot grabber use the code we love hip hop and get a code on uh, get the discount on uh, on your order and um yeah delivery all over the gta all right um yeah big salute to the sponsors so let's get, let's get back into this quick fast here because like I, I feel like i'm all over the place today but That's okay it's just like I said, more of a conversation than yeah. a straight interview. Correct, correct. But you, you came down here from Saga today, right? Yes, sir. Is that where you grew up too? Yeah. So I was actually born in Saudi Arabia. So my parents are from India, mm -hmm. but I was born in Saudi Arabia, and then I moved to Mississauga when I was like nine years old. You know? Okay. And I've been there ever since. What so was the, what was the, like the life like when you first moved out there? Was it still farmland type shit over there? It was still farmland. Yeah, it was still farmland, and it wasn't as. Um, Diverse, like there was like some diversity, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as diverse uh, as it is obviously now. Um, but yeah, man, like it was, it was like a different time. Obviously, growing up in those days where, um, you know, where you had to be outside, there was yeah. all the social media and things of that nature and stuff. And like even musically, uh, in those days, you had like you had to listen to to like radio or 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 you had to watch. TV like much music or BET to mm -hmm. kind of know what they, you know like know what's actual popping. Yeah, yeah, like music. early nineties, early nineties, early nineties, correct. Yeah, correct. so you know before even getting into hip hop and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as a South Asian as as a South Asian kid at the yeah, time, right? Correct. So were you? Was it you and like family? You and like did you have like a crew of like other South Asian cats, like other Indian kids and in different like South Asian countries and stuff like that? Oh well, well now. I'm Growing up, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, in my actual household, it was just me, my mom, my dad, and sister. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, like, I had friends, like, family friends who were also South Asian and such as well. But yeah. I was lucky that I was able to actually grow up around, like, all, all uh, types of cultures, like Filipino, Italian, Portuguese, Guyanese, mm -hmm. Trini, uh, you know. So, so like, that was dope growing up. That was so, when did the music start to, like, not even the DJing, but, like, when did you start noticing I like hip hop. Honestly, I'd say probably in like my high school days in like the nineties. I I uh, definitely grew up, you know, like I was growing up, like I used to listen to all types of music. Like I still like all like the dance music stuff, like mm -hmm, dance mix mm -hmm. ninety five, all that. And then um I also liked alternative rock and stuff. Cool. But then I had a friend of mine that was like just that that uh put me on to Tupac. Mm. And then I just from that I then he was like, you know what, but you if you like Pac, you'll like Nas. And then I really fell in love with it after listening to Nas. And then, then, he, he's like, then he's like, you know what? But like, you want to hear hard stuff? Listen to Wu-Tang. Mm. And then after that, I kind of just got hooked. And then Snoop Dogg and then Jay-Z and kind of like yeah, snowball yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you're listening. Yeah. What part of hip hop did you try to get into? Was it DJing first? Did, were you trying to be a rapper? Did you try anything else first? Yeah, I saw, so I tried to rap first. And I wasn't good. I was Everybody tries to rap first, <laughs> horrible. bro. I was horrible in those days. Um, yeah, so I tried to rap. Tried to make beats in those days. I don't know. I wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So I guess like to me, DJing was like the natural thing to do. Um, and, so, and so that's kind of like what I did. I was like, you know what? I love DJing. And so when I got into DJing was like around the time that uh, everyone was switching from actual vinyl records to laptops where you could still dj on vinyl but you but using software or and the cdjs yeah and, and cdjs and such so that's kind of like so but like i still have vinyl records i bought probably over a thousand vinyl records mm -hmm. when i first started but then once i saw okay you know what because in those days what people didn't realize is that to get the hot vinyl records as a new dj you're not gonna get it because yeah. they're saving it for the big djs like the scratch like the ritzes like dr j's like those guys so you're not getting it you're maybe getting like all the leftover crumbs. Mm. So when you're trying to rock a party, you can't rock, you know, you're not, you're not going to be like, you won't, you won't be able to properly rock it with, you know, with crumbs. But once I saw, Oh yeah, you know, I can DJ on a laptop and just use MP3s. Yeah. Just make, and it's going to save my, my, my back and you know, my legs and 
issues and i was like yeah let's make the switch and this is like early 2000 time yeah it's like 2007 2008 so like even like when napster and all that started to come into play yeah you were already djing at this point yeah actually i i, I started, or you were just starting i was DJ. like just starting to i was like just actually no i think napster probably was already out for a few years so probably it was like after this is after okay so when music started becoming free yeah what changed with the DJs? You, yourself, and what did you start noticing around? Big salute to the sponsors, Diamond Club, with delivery all over the GTA, and now all across Canada. They got the best selection of flour, edibles, and pens, and all types of goodies that you need. You can find them on their Instagram page, Diamond Club underscore Canada, or you can find them on the 7 Days of Weed app, as well as the Leafy Things app. Let them know that you heard about them through the We Love Hip Hop Network, and they may give you a discount. Big salute to Diamond Club. Cheer! I mean, A, it just became easier for anyone to access, right? So anyone can could uh, DJ. Mm. Uh, even in even like 15 years ago when I started, 15, 16 years ago, it was way easier. And then two is like that exclusive that exclusiveness of having a record was kind of gone because the the minute it hit the internet everyone had it yeah it wasn't like you know like it's like for example if you had like your, your you, you know like a single you would send it out to like a few djs you would send out the actual vinyl yeah and that's it and then no one would have it be like oh like that record's fire be like oh yeah but i only have it because you know friday gave it to me and he and he only and he only pressed up eight copies yeah or the label or the label me. yeah or like the label would, would send it to you but like you know but once it became free it's like anyone has it to the point that even non-djs are you know have access to the music yeah so you'll have kids who are like oh play the song you'd be like i haven't heard it and then you'd be like oh damn the song just like leaked like five hours ago on the internet yeah yeah so it's like so it's like crazy right and and uh definitely i think like that changed djing in the sense that you really have to be up to date and up on your game as like a open format dj you know mm-hmm. uh, or even like any other genres that you play you like you have to be up because sometimes like a record can drop like that and you'd be like, oh, okay, damn, I have to be up on it. Or it, it, it can drop literally like two hours like before you have to leave for your house for the, for a gig and you have to be up on it. Yeah. It was like a new Drake record, new feature, like new whoever. Did you do mixtapes? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've like done a few mixtapes or like mix CDs, I guess, as, as they call it. Um, And like, yeah, like th- those were fun. Like I never, like I think I I did one with a, with a couple artists. Um, But like the mixtapes, like for the people who don't know, right? Not to interrupt you, right? No. But for the people who don't know, like the youngins, right? Back in the early 2000s or the mid 2000s, I would say, there was like a mixtape era where like, you can go to a corner store and see DJ Andre 905 mixtape. And it had like Lloyd Banks and yeah. 50 Cent's new song and yeah. all these different artists. It was like a kind of a wild, wild west time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Where yeah. like all this free music was going around and correct, people correct. were kind of profiting off of it. In the- <laughs> yeah, were, yeah, you, yeah. were you in that? Yeah. You know, you know. Actually, I, I, I was probably like the, one of the fools who, who actually gave away my CDs for free. I would never sell it. Mm. But I know, like a few other DJs, like a lot of DJs, I should say, yeah. made money, and some of them made really good money, mm-hmm. and to the point that labels got, you know, were got uh, put onto it. And it was like, okay, well, how are these guys making money, and these girls making money selling our music? Yes. And that was a big thing, right? So that's when like DJ Drama, DJ Drama got raided. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you weren't really deep in it like that. No, to I wasn't be deep in it at, at, at like at like that time. Yeah, but like it's but I mean, but but the crazy thing is, is that even after that that whole drama thing went down, people were still like DJs were still doing mixed CDs mm-hmm. for at least until like the 2010s, it's at least 2016, 2017, 2018. I know we, I was still, I know other DJs were still putting out CDs till maybe like just before covid maybe mm-hmm, and i think mm-hmm. you know when i think djs realize well we're wasting money because no one has cd players in their cars anymore facts <laughs> you know, so. so even as you get into the djing and stuff like that you, yeah you mentioned you got in with the laptops and stuff like that right correct, correct. so you're when did you start getting gigs uh probably like the probably like a couple years after djing i mean after actually like practicing and um and, ha- and how does not just you but like I always wonder when DJs are now, I guess for lack of a better term, gigging, doing their gigs, how do you get into like getting your first one in the first place? Like people take you seriously as a DJ, like, you know, yeah. I could do this fam. I could do the whole night, bro. Yeah. I mean, literally it's just like about who you know mm-hmm. and about networking and just honestly putting yourself out there, whether it's through social media or just going out to actual clubs, bars, you know, um, 
you know, shoe stores, whatever, and just say, hey, I can DJ here for free. I can, you know, at my gym here, you know, I want to I wanna DJ for free. Just yeah. let me set up. You know, I'll bring everything. I'll set up. I'll play for free. Just, you know, see what I do. And if you like me, pay me. If not, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as like a new DJ, you would have to do that. I, I, either that or you hit up other other more established DJs and you can ask to open for them and say, hey, you know what? I'll open for you for free. Just, you know, give me a shot. Let me get 30 minutes. 30 minutes or half an hour, 40 minutes. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So even with that, like, because you mentioned like doing gigs in like, I would call obscure places. Like yeah. you go, you walk into a clothing store and all of a sudden there's a DJ in the back playing, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. What was the weirdest place you ever found yourself DJing? Weirdest place? Um, Where you're um, like, wait a minute. <laughs> why? How is it? Not even why, because you're going to take the money. But yeah. like, why? what am I doing DJing in here? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess you could say stores are kind of like um, just... I've done like a bunch of random. I think like I was DJing like a soccer tournament, just like just. I think that would be pretty random. Um, I think actually no. I think the the funniest was like a year, like a few years back. It's not it's not funny, but like someone's I guess grandparent had died, mm. and then they wanted a DJ to play at the at like an after party as like a celebration of life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But to me, it was just it just felt weird being there. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, if you're if you're, you know if, if if like the pay is good and and the people are cool, then I'll do it. But. Yeah, it was it was it was it was just like a random thing, you know, to do. It was like DJ for someone's funeral. It was like a funeral after party or like a celebration of life after party. It was just weird, you know. You're seeing like half of the people dancing, a couple people yeah, crying people, like, in people the corner, are crying in the corner, <laughs> drinking themselves to to you know, and then you have other people jamming. So wow, it's, wow, it's, it's definitely different. Um, even with the DJing, right? Like yeah. being here in Toronto, mm-hmm. you're there in the West End, Mississauga, and stuff like that. Were you getting a lot of your first work out there or did you have to like make your way downtown? Um, it was both. Actually, I was lucky in that I was able to get into like a few spots downtown. Um, and then along with being in Mississauga as well. Mm-hmm. But actually when I first started, I was like I felt I was I was more downtown than Mississauga. Now I'm I'm most of my gigs are generally more out west, but I mean like I do have a few spots downtown that I'll do. But yeah, when I first started, I was actually more downtown, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, as time goes on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, besides just DJing clubs and stuff, like you were also doing dance halls or different things like that too. Or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I was doing everything like weddings, corporate parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, How do you get into the corporate part? To the corporate stuff. Corporate parties, same thing. It's just kind of like knowing the right people, or like you know, I think like as I was able to kind of become like the DJ for the Raptors Nine Hundred Five, that kind of op- opened me up to more corporate opportunities, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where it's like. Uh, companies would see okay, yeah, this guy DJs for the for the Raptors nine hundred five. So I'm uh, I'm assuming he's good. So we can you know book him. We can trust him to DJ our night for our Christmas party or our summer party or whatever. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, going on. So so even with that, like you know, you've been doing that for a while. The Raptors nine hundred five. Yeah, yeah. Since so twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen. So since they really started, that long, eh? Yeah, it's been like nine, uh, I guess nine seasons. I guess now it's be technically 10 seasons. And yeah, so it's so, crazy. So wait a minute. You're not the first or the only DJ they've ever had. Yeah, yeah. I'm the only DJ for, for, really? for, for the actual Raptors 9 5. Yeah, since they've been in uh, existence. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing that a like, long time, like 10, 10 plus years. Almost so 10 years. did you like go through an application process? How did you get, a, how did you stumble on that? So I was just honestly all through just knowing the right people. Like I, I was saying, so shout out to my guy. Um, he used to go by DJ Doctor, but his name is Lincoln Bio. Mm-hmm. He's, he uh, DJs for King of the Dot and, and he does like a bunch of other stuff. Um, so basically at that time, he was working at uh, the Real Sports Bar, which is owned by MLSC, which is Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they own Raptors, Leafs, TFCs and Argos and uh, I had I had actually hit him up when I saw Raptors Nine Five are gonna have a team in Saga because I'm like you know what I should be their DJ they're Raptors Nine Five I'm Andre Nine Five it just makes sense mm-hmm. and then uh, he actually you know what he was he was super cool he uh, put me in touch with uh, the head of game operations okay um, and then pretty much we just emailed each other I I sent them like a bio and a mix and then they offered me the uh, contract for that season. And then I've been with them ever since. They keep bringing back every every year. So I guess one I'm doing season good job. turned into freaking fifteen. Bro. Yeah, literally, literally. You know, it feels that way. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So with that now, you're doing that. Does it help? Like obviously, actually, it starts opening you up to other gigs. Correct. Right. So when did you first start seeing that happen? Like the phone starts ringing more, basically. Yeah, I'd say like 
didn't start right away. I'd say probably like it took a couple seasons in for people to kind of you know really know who I was. Mm -hmm. And then I think once they kind of started to like you know hear my name and they saw okay you know what rappers nine oh five then it just makes sense to book him at our venue and to and to work with him. So I'd say it took probably like a couple seasons. Yeah, yeah. For that to happen. One thing I also I noticed about you, you're you know a lot about the Toronto music scene. Yeah. What is it has it been recent or have you always been like very interested in like the artists that have been coming up in the scene? I've always been interested, like since probably the early two thousands. Since mm-hmm. you know, since like the time the Empire and like you guys were around. Um, you know, shout out to, to uh, stations like uh, Project Bounce because that really educated me on the Toronto scene. Because at that time, I guess the only people I, I really knew of was like Chocolate, Cardinal, Maestro. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know of this other scene. And then I, you know, then I heard of, you know, Empire, JD Era, Richie Sosa, Tona, yeah. all these dope, talented artists that were coming up and were hungry in like the mid 2000s. And then, you know, and then just kind of to see it um, progress from there. So I think it's, it's, um, important because i think i always say in life you to go forward you have to know your history yes and you have to know like the history of the you know of the music that you're you know of the city that you're from i think it's uh important and to know about you know like the cardinal and the infinite and the maestro fresh fresh and dream warriors but also to know about that era of the 2000s because that was a that was it that was like a crazy time too it was that was like a crazy time too where it's funny i was actually talking to someone from that era maybe like a few months back and they were saying how you really had to be outside so if you had problems with somebody, you're gonna nine times out of ten, you're gonna run into them anywhere at a show. At, at a show, and and I'm sure there, like there was violence and such, but for the most part, everyone got along in those days. And for the most part, people try to keep their street issues out of the music. Mm-hmm. It's not like how it is now, where a lot of the kids bring that. You know, like they just they 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 jump in from the streets into the music. Yeah, and vice versa. You know, so so you know, as somebody who's been DJing for a while. <laughs> and knowing about the scene, getting music submissions from artists and stuff like that, yeah. right? Um, and I want to talk about DJ packs at some point too. Yeah. Um, what's the difference you see now to back then with the way that artists approach bringing you music, or has that even changed at all? Um, I think it's changed with certain artists and some artists. Um, I still think that in terms of the approach, a lot of times, and I'm sure you probably get the same DMs. Yo, fam, check this out. This is fire. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And they'll yeah. send you a link to like a Spotify, and they'll be like, "I can't do anything with the with the Spotify link or Apple Music link. Mm-hmm. Cool, I can maybe listen to it, but I can't play it off. I, I like I can't DJ off of that. Yeah, right. Um, but I think uh, I, I think a lot of artists do understand and do get it, and like like especially if I'm out and if I'm out like uh, at like a industry event. I think a lot of artists now I'm seeing are more polite in their approach and more mm-hmm. gentlemanly and and more uh, friendly, I'd say, than they maybe they were maybe previously, mm. uh, you know, in like years past. And I think now I think a lot of artists understand that hey, you know what, like I I'll we can you, I can catch more flies with honey than I can with uh, vinegar. Yeah, yeah. And just being a professional and just you know being able to kind of like you know sell themselves as like an actual business and and for me to take them seriously yeah. you know, is I think like I see that more and more nowadays actually surprisingly so it's actually good no it's it's a it's a breath of fresh air I would I thought that it was it was getting worse just because you know the whole game has become very static you yeah know what I'm saying yeah and and the thing is too it's like <clears throat> also hip hop music in general and like in the scale of music is kind of dying out for what people are listening to, right? Mm. And that because because I think last year I think Billboard did there there wasn't like a number one hip hop album, not until or maybe until Jason. no Billboard in twenty twenty three. I don't think there was I, any. I don't, I don't think there was any, right? And in twenty twenty four, I think Lil Uzi Vert like broke the seal and finally yeah. went number one. Well, or number one, like yeah, yeah, correct, right? But otherwise, like, so it's like you, it's like artists have to understand that okay, the music's dying out. I have to do different things to make myself stand out and yeah. at the end of the day like you have to treat yourself as a business not just as like yo fam play my song yeah it doesn't, it doesn't work that way you know so it's it's it's, it's crazy and it, and it actually happened to me this past weekend some guy came up to me he's like yo fam here's 10 bucks play my song i'm like bro 10 bucks about, i'm like first of all i'm like i don't care about the money but i'm like if you are gonna give money you got to 10 times that at least 100 yeah for 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 a dj to even take you even seriously 
And number two, it's like, I always say, look, okay, if I'm DJing out live, I don't want to download a song on the spot. It's it's like different if it's someone that I know or if it's like an artist that I know, like, you know, that's established. If Drake, if Drake drops a new song and I haven't downloaded it at home, but I'm at the club and I see, okay, he dropped a new song. I'm going to download it and play it right away. Yes. Because it's Drake. Yeah. But if you're just an upcoming artist, like I'll, I'll always tell them as I, like, and how I, how, how I tell everyone, here's my email. Email me the record. I'll go home. I'll listen to it. If I like it, I will play it like at my next gig. No problem. No issues. Yeah. You know, you, because, and like the guy got mad, but I was like, okay, like, okay, cool. <laughs> ugh, you probably have to deal with so much. Yeah. Bullshit, I mean, I, bro. Yeah, I, think, I think all DJs, I think a lot of his DJs, and I'm sure you as like a podcaster, I'm sure you have, the, the, yeah, the, but the I'm people. dealing with new bullshit as a podcaster, right? <laughs> like, this is like 19 how long bullshit that you guys have been <laughs> yeah, dealing with. Yeah. Like, I know DJs yeah. have been getting pressed forever. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so, yeah. It's, and I think I think nowadays it's not as bad. I think from like some of the stories that even like other DJs have told me from like the 90s and 2000s, that guys would literally get pressed to the point that like they would get surrounded in their booth and like they would be given the vinyl or the CD and they'd be like, you have to play it next and you'd have to keep pulling it up and, you know, like a few times. Wow. Yeah, I've heard stories of... They add the insult to the injury and keep pulling it up. <laughs> you can keep pulling it up and <laughs> shouting them out in the mic and everything. That's so, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like, like it's happened. Like, I think now, it, I maybe I, maybe it still happens now. I just don't know of it, but uh, I know in like the, the early 2000s, like that used to happen. <laughs> it, was, it was like rough on here. You know, low key, like, I feel like sometimes we complain so much about the youth and stuff like that. Yo, they're so crazy and stuff like that. But yeah. I'm always very in defense of them because I am I know those times, those 2000 yeah, times. Yeah, of course. When mans were like, in your face, pause, like, where they were just like, do this or else. We're right here. They're not threatening you on freaking Instagram or no, something like that. No, it's not like on Instagram. It's like, you're, it's like real life action. It's yes. Real life action where if you don't play their record, you're going to probably end up in the hospital. Yeah. Type thing, right? So, uh, you know, and like, I have to give credit even because a lot of even, you know, like the, like the young kids, you know, generally that do approach. And even if they come up to me at like a Raptors 905 game, I'll be like, hey, here's my email. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, most people are cool. They'll be like, okay, cool. You know what? And I'll be like, you know, what's your IG? You know, you know what? And I'll be like, okay, you know what? If they're if, if they're cool enough, I'll like, you know what? I'll like, I'll say, okay, you know what? What's your IG? Let me follow you. Yeah. Follow me back. Tap in there, tap in there. And if they're really cool, I'll be like, you know what? Take down my my phone number, right? Otherwise, you know, otherwise I'll be like, I wish you know what? Here's my email. Here's my IG. Tap mm. in, I'm like you know, and and we can talk, not just play the song right now on the spot because yeah. I don't know how it sounds. I don't know how it finishes. How it starts. There's a break in between, you know. I don't know if it's gonna work for this crowd. It so. might be trash. <laughs> Maybe trash. <laughs> a lot of times it could be trash. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever think that you would see Toronto have such a fan base of itself? Big salute to Steven Hot Grabber with a variety of different grabber flavors and dispensers. They got Red Rose Grabber, that Red Herring Grabber, and Peanut Butter. Hit them up on their Instagram page, Steaming Hot Grabber, and use the code We Love Hip Hop and receive a discount on your order. Again, you can find them on Instagram, Steaming Hot Grabber. Now let's get back to the show. Cheer. You know what's crazy? Uh, I, I, like, you know, st you know, DJing from like the two, the mid two thousands to now, I like mm -hmm. yeah, I never thought I would see it. And then once I once you kind of saw the waves, and, and like you would have guys and an artist that would have like a little splurge, like you know, I remember A Game and JD Era and even Empire, where you guys had, mm -hmm, where you mm -hmm. guys had like those flashes. But to see the overwhelming, like what you say, what you saw, what you saw with Pressa and K Money, yeah, and Pangs and Three M French and certain artists and Doovy and such, like. I just I just didn't envision it to the point that like you could play a whole set of of Toronto music, which back in the two thousands you really couldn't. If you did, you, you would do you that, would, bro. The owner would be like, okay, like you know, you're, like, you're gone. You're not coming back. I don't back know what these week. songs are next. I don't know these songs next. The girls will look at you. They'd be like, what are you playing? But to the point now that girls are the ones asking for the records, not even guys. Yeah. When did you start noticing it, fam? I'll, like I'll I'll tell you quick. Like doing this podcast in the beginning. I did, like I started noticing it when people were coming over to the Youngsterdam and they were like playing stuff on the TV, but they would play Toronto shit. And I was like, look at this. Like they could go to the, I don't know, who whoever, Lil Uzi Vert or whoever who's popping that yeah. at that, you know, but they go pick Roadrunner or a Pressa song and then one of their own guys and then yeah. and they know the words. And I was like, 
hmm, this is like 27, 2018, 2017. I was like, there's something different going on here. Did you know that? Was it around the same, same time for exact you? Exact same time, pretty much. I think it was right after, um, I remember Smoke Dog had dropped Trap House. Mm. That was like, what, 2015, 2016? And then you kind of saw Prime Boys and those guys, and like the downtown Prime really, boys, yeah. they were really bubbling up in, 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 in clubs. And then Presa was coming up, and then K Money, I guess, had dropped a couple years, like a year or two after that. Mm-hmm. And you're really seeing, and then with Top Five was really bubbling. So you were really seeing to the point that like people just didn't care and that they just wanted to hear Toronto music. They didn't care about hearing the next US artist. They didn't care about hearing Dancehall or Afrobeats. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, they wanted to hear. Toronto trap and like they wanted to hear like the drill like the like the, the you know like just like the, the like the real hardcore sh- street stuff not even yeah. like the safer stuff you know like you know so to speak right so yeah it's like it was it was crazy to see you probably had to like start doing some shifting in your in your catalog like okay let me start downloading some of these songs yeah yeah you know what? like I had a lot of the songs and I was just like man like I I love these songs but I can I can only maybe play them on uh, radio or, or at like a nine to five game not really. But once I saw, okay, I can play this live and that people, that the response was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I think to this day, um, uh, Griselda Blanco is still one of the biggest songs to ever come out of this country, yes. hip hop wise. I would say, I would put it up there, like, outside of obviously what Drake has done, Tory Lanez, obviously, like, what they've done is crazy. They're, but, they're besides the point. But, like, I'd say, I put it up there with, like, what Maestro was doing. Yeah. And what Chalk Clear when he had Let's Ride. I think, like, it's it's at that level, maybe even bigger than. I think it might be past that. I think it's past right? that. Like, that, like, that to this point that, to the point that people, like, and when I've played it, I've seen people of all cultures, not just, you know, like black or brown like i'm talking chinese i'm talking white like arabic like they will sing the song they will rap the song word for word mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know and the second verse too you know it's, it's yeah, crazy, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. that means that this is what they're bumping in their car like yeah like the other day i interviewed roni right and when i left the interview i'm driving back home i'm driving up the road and i i'm stopped at a light and all of a sudden i'm hearing roni playing from man's car next to me I had to take a little, I didn't want to take a video too much, to, <laughs> but I had to take a little video on, on the, on the, on the sneak just yeah. so I could send it to Roni. Like, yo, yeah, what are man. the odds, bro? <laughs> yeah. But the odds are higher now, no, fam. It's, it's high. Like, you know what? I was, um, randomly, I was at Dollarama like two weeks ago and I heard Northside, I heard, uh, Northside Benji blaring from someone's car, mm. from some like um, Filipino kid's car was blaring it. And I was like, like, like it's it's great to see, and I'm happy yeah. to see that. I'm yeah. happy yeah. to see that that you know these artists like they have fans, and that you know they can you know make money now. And like I love what uh, someone like a uh, Roni is doing, touring the country, making money. Mm-hmm. Like that's the ultimate, and they doing his own show, like sold out shows throughout the country. Yeah, like salute to Roni because like that that takes work. Yeah, yeah. And to and and you know and I wish more artists get that opportunity. I don't know, obviously, because of street politics and, you know, it's like certain artists that can't work out. But I think he's an example that I think a lot of artists in Toronto should look at and see, hey, you know what? If he can do it and like, like I don't want to say copy his blueprint, but kind no, of copy see, that shit, man. But, but yeah, copy or see what he's done and say like, hey, you know what? I can do that. Maybe, you know, build up my fan base, build up my listeners and then sell yourself to the point that you can do shows. Yeah. You know, so it's important. I, I say straight up copy that shit because. What Roni is doing, he's not reinventing the wheel. He's just adding the other piece to the puzzle. If you're an artist, you can't just be secluded to having YouTube videos and streams on Spotify and stuff. Yeah. You have to go out there and be you know, see the be people, outside. fam. You have to be on stage. Your fan base should be able to see you rocking the stage. And then you also get better at rocking stages because you're the repetition. Correct. You're putting in your reps every time, every show, right? Yeah. And like you're seeing that now with like, you know, certain other other um, artists, right? But like with Roni, I think he just kind of gave people like a blueprint. And I think, mm-hmm. and I hope more artists follow that and yeah. can, you know, put out their own shows. Because the thing is, people only think about Ontario, but there's so many places, like like he's in Alberta, he's in Saskatchewan, yeah. he's in like the most random place. And like, not only him, I know uh, Presso was doing shows in like Saskatchewan, mm-hmm, Halifax, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is great, you know, like, like get your money. Because those places will probably pay you much more than you would be in Toronto. That's facts. That's facts. You know, so. What do, what do you think about like now? Because that 2017, 2018 time when we started really seeing people loving Toronto music. Yeah. I feel like things have happened over the years where we're not there no more. Correct. 
right? One, what do you think is the difference between then and now? And what can we do to maybe even get that energy back? I think a couple of things. I think one is that's like a few people have, have uh, unfortunately passed away mm-hmm. and or are locked up. So that I think has kind of a lot of people that had traction and motion, unfortunately, either you die or you've been locked up. That's kind of killed a lot of the buzz. Yeah. Too. And I think another thing that's kind of that's hurt is um, I think just hip hop in general is just not as popular with the young kids as it was five, six years ago. And now it's starting to be like I'm replaced by like EDM music and Latin music and other pop music and other genres. Afrobeats is like huge, right? So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of starting to phase out. And I think that's kind of like what's happening. And I think uh, for it to kind of get back to that point, I think just artists just need to make just, I think, good music. Just like great music. You have to make music that's undeniable, or you know, like undeniable. Like I know it's easier said than done, yeah. but just you just have to make great music and you have to make something that's different. That people yes. maybe haven't heard, um, you know, whether it's like a different beat or like a different style or something that mm-hmm. can make you stand out. Different look. Different look, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, Young Thug is one of the most popular rappers out there. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think he's saying anything different than any rappers said over the years. No. And I'm not advising to do the same things as him, but he came in wearing a dress and everybody was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Until the t- point where he shed the dress, and now people are just like, "Yo, he's one of the most prolific artists." Yeah. Oh my god, the things that he says and the way that he says it is just—you know what I mean? Yeah, they're like it's taking like, and he's he's amazing. Like, correct. People take him seriously as an artist, but there was something so different about him when he yeah. first came in that everybody yeah. had to pay attention. Yeah, like I said, I'm not telling everybody to go run and wear a dress. Wear a dress it probably it won't even work anymore. It you won't know work what I'm anymore. Yeah, but like he did something so different, and everybody had to pay attention to him. Yeah, no, no, hundred percent. And like that's what you have to do, right? You have to have something that makes you stand out and mm-hmm. unique, and then you know people are gonna pay. Uh, uh, and 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 then people will, will will like you know play your music or or they'll support it and if they like it they'll support it if it's not good and if it's and if there's fluff behind it then people know yeah yeah you, you did mention earlier um and I want to just spin back around to that quick fast about the politics stuff with playing music yeah right give me an example of you having to deal with this oh yeah <laughs> it's a funny story well that like how did story. that come like how does that work so, so basically it's like okay if you're playing you have to be cognizant of where you're playing and what of like what place you're DJing at. But sometimes you don't know, right? Because if you're in a venue with three, four hundred people, you don't know who's in the venue. Mm. Right. So for example, like uh this is like 2016, 2017, right when Presta had dropped Novocaine. Mm. That was that record was ridiculously huge at that time, right? And I remember I was playing it, uh, I think for it was like a New Year's party. And when I I dropped it and the crowd just blew, like the roof, like you would have thought like the roof blew off. Mm -hmm. And so I saw some guy walking over to me and I thought he said, bring it back. So I kept bringing it back from the top. Explosions, you know, all the sound effects, you know, everything, right? And then I guess he makes his way across the room till he finally comes up to me and he grabs me by the chest. He's like, fam, don't play that. I'm like, oh, I thought you said to bring it back. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, this guy's my ops and this guy did some. I don't know. He was just talking. He was just, he was just going up. I'm like, okay, bro, like, calm down. Like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. And the thing is, like, a lot of us DJs when we're playing, we don't know who likes who, who doesn't like who. And sometimes, like, you have to be so cognizant of what's going on in the streets and who's like, you know, who's this who, and you know, like, at and at that same time too, it's like I also have to look at it. You have to take yourself out of it as a DJ and look at it as a human being. Mm-hmm. Say if someone diss my dead friend or, 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 or dead family member and I'm at a club and everyone's turning up to, you know, where they're like saying, oh yeah, we, we shot this person, blah, blah, blah. We smoked them. Like, I don't know how I would feel. So yeah. I, I completely understand their reaction too. Yeah. Right. So you have to look at it from both sides and, you know, you just, you just have to be cognizant and just, you know, realize. But at the same time too, I always tell people, look, if it's a hot record, it's a hot record, you know, whether yeah. Whether we want to admit it or not, whether you like it or not, right? So, you just I always tell people, look, if you if if your ops are making hot music, make something hotter. They make something hotter, or make something better, or you know what? Like, don't get at the DJ because I've had this talk with so many other artists. Like, for example, um, what's his name? Uh, Pillar B, mm-hmm. cool, super cool guy. We've 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 had this talk, and he and he told me, he's like, Andre, I don't care who you play if you play my ops, 
because you're a DJ, you're exempt from this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, honestly, Pilla, I wish more people thought like you because <laughs> a lot of people do not think like that. And, yeah. and I get it too. And I understand why people are, 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 are upset and frustrated, right? So, but he told me, he's like, look, I don't care if you play, you're, you're, you're getting paid, you have a job to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what I, I, and I try to rationalize with people. Like I have a job to do, right? Because I'm sure it's same with you as like a podcaster, you interview people from all different sides all of, over of, the of place. beef. Yeah. And I'm sure some artists were like, oh, I'm going to come on because he interviewed this. But it's like, I always think that's, you're, you're being small and you're acting like an elementary school child. Yeah. You look at it as a business. Yeah. If you say, you know, and I always say, look, okay, if, I, if, if, hey, if you have something hot, send, send it my way. Mm-hmm. Or you have my email, here's my number, hit me up anytime. I don't care. Like the, the lines are there. Yeah. I'm not going to just take a side and this and that. You know, like I'm not like that. I mean, like me personally. It's crazy that as a DJ in Toronto, and probably this happens in other places too, you have to like educate yourself on what's going on out there or you can get your head smoked. <laughs> yeah, because it can be, for example, you can be booked to, to DJ like an actual after party for these same artists and you could play the wrong song not realizing, oh, they don't like that side. And, and that's happened to me where mm. I've, uh, like a funny story, but um, Banton, when he used to play on the uh, Rappers 905, mm-hmm. Uh, basically, I played someone that I thought he was cool with, and his area was cool with, but I didn't realize he, they weren't cool with till after. Oh and man! And like literally, it wasn't him. His friend was like going like this, but like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, okay, yes, yes, yes." <laughs> you know, so but you live and you learn. But yeah, I, I, not you know, and then, and, I, and I really learned from that day. Okay, you know what? If you know, like, and it, not not just him, but if I know, okay, if I'm gonna DJ like a party for like a certain artist. I'm going to just look to see who, who they're following mm-hmm. and make sure, okay, if they're not following these people, odds are I'm not going to play it. Yeah. You want to go check the blogs, see if check they're the beefing blogs, anybody. Yeah, if they're beefing yeah. anybody, what area they're from, you know. Yeah. Look yeah. up Six Sounds or one of these other sites that we know what they're doing, if there's any street politics and or on uh, Torontology, see who's beefing who and that's Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you, you got to be, you got to wear many hats when you're a DJ over here, man. <laughs> you do, you do, 100%. Um, you know, just a couple of things before we end our conversation. I want you to emphasize on DJ packs and what those are. Yes. So a DJ pack, it's um, the clean, the dirty, instrumental, acapella version of a song, mm-hmm. of your record. Um, and I always tell artists the clean because you want a clean version because you want your song to be played on radio, at a mm-hmm. stadium, at you know, at a, at a sporting event, at a wedding, at a corporate. We can play it, you know, at all, all those specs and the dirty version, obviously, then you can play like the actual song, but mm-hmm. the instrumental you want. So in case you can make what's called like a DJ eight bar intro, which makes it easier to mix the record in and blend the record in mm-hmm. rather than just drop the record. Uh, and then the acapella in case if you don't like the, like the beat, but you like the, like the vocals, you can remix it and, you know, play, play that acapella over maybe like a Drake or like a future record or whoever yeah, else. You yeah. Know? And and that. you're getting these currently, right? Yeah. How many of these do you have to actually create for people? Uh, not actually not as lot as as I used to. As I, I mean, like for a lot of people, like I've done for a lot of artists in the city, I've had to make clean radio edited packs for them to mm. be played on at stadiums and to be to to be played at different events. But actually, to nowadays, it's not as much. Maybe like one one person here and there will hit me up and be like, "Hey, Andre, I need this done. Yeah, Can you yeah, make me yeah. clean." But for the most part, most artists now, they're realizing, hey, you know what? I'm already spending the money with my engineer. Might as well pay them, you know, might as well have them make me a clean. Because I think with most engineers, I'm maybe I'm wrong, but as far as I know, most of the time when you're paying for the time to mix and master a, a, a record, they can do the clean for you. Yes. It's just a lot of times, a lot of, you know, them don't want to do it. But if you tell them, hey, I want this for radio, they they, they, they should make you a clean version. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of the artists don't know that they need that until like, you know, there's conversations like this that happen and they're like, oh, next time I'm in the studio, I'm going to tell this, I'm going to tell my engineer to do that. And, but you know, what's funny Friday is that when I'll ask them, I'll be like, okay, like, you know, I don't have time to make it clean. Can you just hit up your engineer? There's always excuses. My engineer's gone. He's gone AWOL or she's gone AWOL. They're, they're out of the country. They're locked up. They're, they're, they, you know, they're away on vacation. Something's happened to them. Just like I hear all the excuses all the time. You know what it is? Um, he told me that I'm gonna have to pay for for an hour for him to do that. And I don't. I'm not trying to pay him. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> you know I just said it. That's probably it. That's probably it. 
100%. Um, <coughs> last thing, and uh, you know, we'll we'll hit the road because we're we're like an hour here. We've been we've been chopping it up, man. Okay, okay. As a DJ, yeah. Toronto DJ, somebody who's tapped into the scene, mm-hmm. who do you see as the next up? Wow, that's a it's a tough. There's you know there's a few or a, a few people. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll name a few people who I personally think are already up or if they're all, already kind of there like uh Hawaii mighty is already there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, i think roni what he's doing right now is incredible i think it's going to be time before he'll be touring in europe and hopefully to the states like i don't know what his legal situation is but mm-hmm. i can see him crossing over um toby i think toby yeah. um i think he's i think his music's phenomenal you know i think it's phenomenal like i'm i'm a, I'm a big fan of him um i like like there's, there's so many people i like I, I think you know i think like black of the dawn He's someone who always I, I feel constantly evolves and constantly mm-hmm. changes and reinvents himself. So I think Blacka, um, so many like everything, Oshan, like like Pyrex, there's so many people I'm fans of that I personally kind of want to see go far. I think obviously AR Paisley mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. him having a deal now, I think you're kind of gonna see more things with him. Um, wow, there's there's like a lot of other people. Like I think I think even Mula too. I think with Mula when he comes back, hopefully he can, you know, hopefully he can make a uh, like a sting and he can make a bang and obviously what Pressa and BFR what those guys are doing they, mm-hmm. they've always been putting in work so shout out to Bundog and what they're doing Um, yeah and actually even Big Slime too I know Big Slime has some big things coming up too mm-hmm. so I could I could kind of I, I know he's got some big things in the work too so shout out to him yeah yeah Um, so yeah you know what just like these are the, some of the people I'm thinking off off top like Tia Banks I'm a big fan of yeah. Nessie I'm a fan of there's like there's there's like a lot of people like Young Cake I'm a fan of like I work with uh, so there's like a lot of people in the in like the city I think but I think even the R and B in the city is like I'm not sure how tapped in you are with like some of the upcoming I, I'm, I need to tap in more there's like there's like some dope artists like Kenya Jade mm-hmm. someone I think everyone should, should yeah she's like she's really dope uh Edmond, I don't know if you heard of her she's like a some she's a Somalian artist she was she was signed to Sony I don't know if she signed anymore uh her name is Edmond. she like, she's dope. So they, there's some good R&B even coming from the city. It's Omega funny. Mighty. So. Oh, 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 yeah, Omega. Yeah, I, 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 interviewed, I interviewed her maybe a few months back. Yes, yes. And and um, Kenya, what? Kenya Jade. Kenya Jade. I feel like I heard her name on the Joe Button podcast. Probably. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Like she's, <laughs> right? she's super talented. She's super talented. Like, I'm a huge fan of her. And, uh, and like, I, I think she can go places. Like, she's she's incredible yeah man no it's 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 an education session over here um and i, and I really appreciate you even having this conversation with me oh, bro. No, like, no, thank you appreciate you we, reaching out appreciate we got it. we got to really get to know what's going on with you your your upbringing and just you know just about the scene man and, yeah you know what i'm saying because there's one thing to like hear about it from a rapper's perspective mm-hmm. they can only really speak for themselves but i feel like the dj can speak for themselves and the people at the same time because you deal with so much people we're like the liaison between the artists and, and the people yeah a lot of times we are the liaison right so not only the artists and the people but also the people and like what's what's trending in the culture because like yeah there's one thing to post something on instagram and be like oh this is popping because it got some traction but if you play something and you can see the people moving, you can actually see the impact of what records are doing. Yeah, 100%. 110%. That's a whole different level than just seeing how many likes it got on the gram. No, and that's it. And I think I think now even labels are starting to realize, oh, yeah, we can hire DJs as a and or yeah. executives because they should be part of the, the a decision-making process when like records are dropping and albums are coming out because they know what's what's popping in the clubs or they know what people are, are listening to down to the BPM level, yeah, like BPM um, amount and everything like that. Like yeah. you need to have somebody who thinks more than just, Oh, I like this song. Yeah, correct. You know what I'm saying? Because you play songs that I'm sure you don't like, but you know, the party's going to move. Of course. Of course. I think, I think every DJ plays this place, you know, some songs that they do that, that they're not the biggest fans of, but they know we'll get the party jumping. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, what you got coming up in the near future? Uh, just honestly, just uh, just uh, you know, keeping busy this summer DJing. Um, you can you can catch me every Friday at Nomads in Mississauga. Mm. Like I'll be, uh, like all over the like the city come summertime, like downtown. I'll be, uh, at places like Free Play, uh, Grace Grace O'Malley's. I'll be there. Okay. Uh, a couple times a month. 
And then I'm also still on radio on Vibe 105 every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, mixed show. So if you're an upcoming artist, please hit me up. Yes. Professionally in the DMs or, you know. Um, but yeah, so I'm just, just doing that. Have like a bunch of remixes on the on the way. Uh, and, I've, and I've been back in like the studio making beats again, which is nice. So uh, definitely artists hit me up as well. Like, let's work and let's, you know, like, let's uh, make some hits. Where can they find you, man? Just uh, best way is uh, Instagram, DJ Andre905, or just uh, Google me. You'll find my Twitter, Instagram, all that, all that good stuff. Okay, okay. DJ Andre905 in the building. I really, really, like I said, enjoyed having this conversation. I feel like I learned a lot about the game as well. You know what I'm saying? And, and I feel that the people out there will learn a lot as well. Make sure to hit that like. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Big salute to the sponsors, Diamond Club. Hit them up on their Instagram page, Diamond Club underscore Canada, as well as Steaming Hot Grabber. Hit them up on their Instagram page, Steaming Hot Grabber. Um, DJ Andre 9 to 5 in the building. Sir, thank you. We are off of this. Thank you. Deuces. We love hip hop.